Depth of field is an important part of any motion design piece. In this tutorial, I'm gonna show you how to improve your depth of field in After Effects. Hey, my name is Cameron with Motion Science, and in this tutorial, I'm gonna show you how to improve your depth of field inside of After Effects. Now, depth of field is super important if you wanna direct the viewer's attention or you wanna create a sense of depth in your work. So if you wanna take your work up a notch, let me show you how it's done. Okay, so here we are inside of After Effects, and I've got a animation happening on screen here. First off, we're gonna make this a lot more interesting by adding a camera. So I have camera one, which we see right here, and what I'm gonna do is just turn this camera on and you're gonna see I've set some options up here inside of Transform so that we have position already set. We've got uh, a wiggle expression, which I have turned off and we have orientation set, X rotation, zero, Y rotation set to 25. But if I turn this on, immediately you're gonna see how much more interesting this is, right? Just by adding a 3D camera inside of After Effects. On 99% of all my projects I work on, I use a 3D camera. And that is for various reasons, but one of the reasons is so I can get interesting angles like we see here. But what we can do is make this even more interesting by playing around with the camera options which are found here. And in today's tutorial, we're gonna play around with zoom, depth of field, focus distance, aperture, blur level, and iris shape. The options below, iris rotation through highlight saturation, these are ones you can play around with. I find that I use these very, very little, like 1% of the time. The majority of the time, using these settings right here, you're gonna get a lot more interesting looks. So how can we make this more interesting? Let's start with our zoom, which we see right here. So let's go ahead and crank up our zoom. And by doing that, we're actually gonna kind of push in on this shot here. And I found that a value of around 4266 is looking pretty good. So I'm nice and tight on this image here. That is zoom. Next, we have depth of field. Let's go ahead and turn it on. And by default, most of the time, you're not gonna see a whole lot of things change. It looks pretty much the same. So that's on and this is off. What we can do to make this look more interesting is to crank up the aperture. So depending on your camera preset, your aperture value here is gonna be different, but I like to crank this value way up there. So maybe if we crank it up to something like 347, you're gonna see all of a sudden we're getting focus distance happening here. So for this project, I actually cranked this value way up there, and this is higher than I do for a lot of projects, but for this one looks pretty interesting. I'm gonna put in 2,500. And you can see, ooh, it's just a blurred, jumbled mess to look at. But what we can do is start playing around with our focus distance, which we can crank up or down here. So I can crank this down, and you're gonna see things are gonna start to come into focus by pulling this down down, down, down. We're seeing some things come into focus here. So what I can do is I can actually jump down here into two views. Now in this top view here, I can see where my camera is focusing. And I can see that by looking at this line here. So if I drag the focus distance, you're gonna see as I drag to the right, it's getting further away. As I drag to the left, it's getting closer. So this is how I can kind of adjust my focus where I want it to be. I'm gonna go ahead and pull it down to something like this. And as you can see here on the right side, I'm zoomed in on this Boston 34. So let's go back to one view and kind of zoom in here. And we're on Boston 34. So what I'm gonna do now is move up in my timeline. We're gonna go to about 112 or so. And we're gonna set a keyframe here for focus distance. And we're gonna go one second down. So let's go to 212. And let's just play around with our focus here and let's pull the focus even tighter. So we're focused in on this second area here, something like that. And then let's move a little bit further down and we'll set a second keyframe and say, hey, we're still here and we'll go one more second. So 504 and then we're going to pull this down even more so we can focus in on this area here. And let's find a good value for this somewhere right in here. Yeah, it's nice and in focus here because what I have is some type that's coming on here at this point now. So now if I select all these and I right click and say keyframe, easy ease, and I preview this, we're gonna have a pretty cool look already. And in our preview, you can see how much more interesting this is, right? So we're focused on Boston 34 and then the password and then login. So we're really focusing the viewer's attention on what it is that we're typing in on this login screen. 
and it just creates a lot more visual interest for our viewer by using this depth of field settings here. So let's just look really quickly here at a couple more settings. Uh, blur level is set to 100%. Typically, I leave this at 100%, but if you wanted to create even more blur than what we have here, you can go to something like 200%, and this is just gonna create even more blur, right? It looks a little crazy there. Um, another way you could do this is just crank down the aperture, let's say from 2,500 to 1,000, right? And these values are really, really high, but I wanted a high uh, blur value. And then we could take the blur level up to 200%, and we, we get a very similar look like this. So if I take a screenshot here, that's blur level 200%. We'll go back to 100%, and we'll take this to 2,500 pixels, and we'll compare. And you see here, we pretty much get the same basic look. So that's another way you could uh, approach this. And then lastly, we have iris shape. Now by default, After Effects defaults to fast rectangle. Uh, this is because this renders a lot faster. I typically always work in preview mode. Whenever I'm, I'm designing something and getting it kind of just right, I'm gonna leave it at fast rectangle. Once I'm ready to go to a final render, I like to use hexagon or heptagon personally. But let me show you what this looks like. So we have a screen capture here of the, the current render, fast rectangle, and we're gonna switch it over here to triangle. And you're gonna see the look of this change as it switches over, but you can also see how much longer it's taking to render just one single frame. And there it is, and this is fast rectangle versus triangle, right? And you can see, like, look right here at the corner, there's a triangle right here. Also here on this corner, we're seeing a triangle. So again, fast rectangle, not the, prettiest depth of field blur, but it works, right? It's very quick. Here's triangle. Let's also take a look at square. So you're gonna see things change like from this triangle here, it's gonna have probably four sides to it, right? So it's a little bit smoother blur there. Let's go to pentagon. Again, pentagon meaning five. So we're gonna have even more geometry to work with. Looks even better. Personal favorite of mine is hexagon. And then this is the one heptagon that I tend to use the majority of the time when I'm outputting a final render. To me, it just looks you know really nice. So there's heptagon and then here's fast rectangle. So you can see it just has a little bit nicer blur to it. it looks a little bit uh, looks nicer to me. And that my friends is how you create a better depth of field in After Effects with the camera options. I hope that you really enjoyed this lesson as much as I loved teaching it. So please let me know if you have any questions in the comments below. I'd love to answer them for you. Hit that like button if you enjoyed this video and please subscribe to this channel. It helps other people find this channel as well. If you're looking to upgrade your design skill set, master the art of style and execute like a pro, I have a course called Stylecraft that you can check out at motionscience.tv. You can also learn more about this course by clicking the link in the description below. As always, thanks for watching. My name is Cameron and this is Motion Science.